because uh, we're going to talk to talk TV legend James Whale, who himself has been going through his own health battle uh, with cancer. Thanks for joining us, James. Uh, I mean, we're asking our viewers today, uh, you know, should British people have the right to make their own decisions about ending their own lives? Uh, where do you stand? I absolutely agree with Rebecca and I agree with uh, Esther as well. Uh, nobody has a right to tell you what you can and cannot do. Um, as I'm sure most people know, I'm terminally ill, uh, have been for about the last four or five years and uh, could go any time. Um, and I don't want to go through some of the pain that you begin to suffer. I mean, some of the, some of the treatments give you more pain. But when I've decided I've had enough, I'm not going to let any other prat tell me because of their views uh, what I may or may not do with my own life. Yeah. It, it seems to me that actually we're going to reach a position where this isn't inevitable anyway. There's uh, lots of discussions about uh, assisted dying being legalised in Scotland, Jersey, the Isle of Man, which would mean that we'd have a completely different picture, really, across the United Kingdom um, as to where it's legal and where it's not. But I think something a lot of people don't understand is in many respects, we actually have a form of assisted dying, if you will. If you're elderly and very poorly and you go into hospital, the Liverpool, Liverpool pathway is essentially designed to sort of gently end your life and give you pain relief. So why is it, do you think, that there is such a problem with moving forward to actually creating a circumstance where that is in the open and legitimate? I can tell you exactly yeah. why. Because, sorry, who was that to? Well, I didn't actually say to anyone, so... <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you go first, Rebecca. Go on, Rebecca. Oh, sorry, James. Um, it's lovely to see you, by the way. All I was going to say about the livable pathway is that there are so many different types of cancer and illness that are terminal that are not affected by painkillers. So the pain will still break through the opioid barrier. And it isn't really the same as having an assisted death. I went to Parliament on Monday with dignity in dying. Um, and what uh, are the people that I spoke to who had lost loved ones in the most painful way, or they had taken their li own lives, hugely violent, they discovered um, bodies in all sorts of conditions. It, it, it's just insupportable. And what my mum said, which I really wanted to, to say, is that making this law and protecting vulnerable people against a few criminals who may take advantage of it it's like saying we shouldn't choose to drive because there are a few bad drivers exactly. out there. A bad case makes a bad law, mm. and this is a bad law. Yes, we should safeguard with teeth, which is what Keir Starmer said, and we will because it's 400 million people have mm. this already. We can pick and choose the best parts, mm. make it work for us, protect people like James, like my mother, like all mm. the people I met on Monday who are so powerful and brilliant and inspiring and we are not helping them we are letting them down I agreed uh, james uh, this is what i think is so wrong about the current scenario it is this that esther should she decide uh, to end her own life uh, you know has got the money uh, i'm sure you have to to fly to switzerland to go to dignitas she can afford it uh, ludicrously technically if rebecca goes with her when she comes back to britain uh, she could be charged with assisting a, mur uh, a murder or a death or something like that so you know that is just insane that relatives who go to say goodbye to their dear loved one come back to possibly face criminal charges, but everybody should be allowed to make this choice if they want to make it, uh, and that it should include people who can't afford 10,000 quid or whatever it is to go to Switzerland. Would you agree? Uh, I totally agree. I apologise about my dog, Daisy, who wants to come in and you might hear barking in the background. <laughs> you know, th this whole business is... Uh, it, it, we should be called no dip or should be an organisation no dignity in dying because a lot of people will tell you be quiet Daisy a lot of people will tell you that there is no there is no pain at the end there is let me tell you in many many cases uh, and a lot of uh, doctors and nurses are very good they will up your uh, your painkillers and you will slowly fade away and that's great but what I'm concerned about is the amount of of power that religion, whether it's Christian, Islamic or any other religion, seems to be able to pull on other people. I am completely secular. 
I have private beliefs like we all do in my head, and I don't wish to be told what I can or cannot do by a bunch of people who, who believe a story that probably isn't even true. Uh, very, very good point, uh, Rebecca, yes? I think it's an amazing point, and it's one I respect people who are of faith. I wish I had faith myself. It would be very comforting at a time like this. But I don't believe that anybody else's belief system should affect the amount of pain and dignity my mother has at her death, or I have at my death, or you have at yours. This is the thing that is inevitable. We are all going to die. And how we die reflects how we live in a country where we should be allowed to choose our own path. Yeah, thank you both for taking the time to Thanks, talk James. to us Thanks, on this uh, really thank sensitive subject. I mean, Isabel, I think everyone here... Oh, well, thank here you, Daisy, as well, by is the way. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, course. Daisy. Uh, it seems everybody here is in consensus on this subject, that it almost now seems sort of medieval to have the approach that someone at the end of their life who is suffering, who may... When, when we talk about dignity, let's actually get into the details of this. People have lost control of bodily functions, so they're not necessarily, you know, clean, comfortable. People who might be in severe pain. Surely, I mean, we put our pets down if they're suffering. Yeah, that's a very good point. That. If we can give that to an animal, why on earth can we not give yeah. that to a human? I mean, I agree. I've witnessed, I'm afraid, up close several deaths in the last few years and one of my mother in the last few months. And frankly, um, the way my mother died is not something that I would want to go through. It was pretty awful. The last week of her life was not dignified. Yeah. Uh, we did our absolute best for her as a family, but the setting in which she died in the NHS was not good. Um, there was so, I have many, many things to say around this, but it's not. it certainly made me think about my mortality and whether I want to end up in the way that she did. Now, she was very, very Christian and would not have wanted assisted dying and would have argued very vociferously against it. But I think it's, it's the choice. It comes comes back to the mm, choice. Right. Fine, if you are of a person of deep faith and you think that only God has the right mm. to end your life, your last gasp, he, he almighty should have that moment in his power, fine, but you don't have to impose that choice yeah. on the rest of us. Yeah. Think about it, you know, people who've got some of these awful conditions like motor neuron oh, disease or something right. like that. Yeah. Now, you know, that's a downhill slide. So you've and got you know two... two yeah, exactly right. You, you, for the last mm. years of these poor people's lives, they are terrified of what the final months will uh, yes, bring. Uh, and right. this yeah. will excuse them of that terrible, yeah, undignified them fate. of that. Yeah. I also had to put down a, a much-loved pet in the last few weeks, and I can't tell you how gentle that was. Yeah, it was no, a, I've done it It was quick times. and it was beautiful and it was very, very tough, mm. but gone. Yeah. So peaceful. And, you feel, and you feel, I've done it several times. No with trauma for the but animal. It, but you feel, you feel you're doing the right thing for the dog. And if it was a human being, of course, they'd make their but, own decisions. But surely it enables the family as well to start putting into place plans, not just in terms yeah, yeah, of yeah, totally, the, de the yeah. death but and the style of death, but the date of death, the funeral, all those arrangements mm -hmm. can be calculated, worked out, so it can be a real sort of celebration, if you will. Yeah. I mean, funerals aren't happy occasions, but they, they, they be. shouldn't be... So <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to it, don't yeah, you worry. Yeah, too, <laughs> pop, pop in the champagne. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting subject. Why do you think the Conservative Party have been so reticent mm. about talking um, about I this? I think there are a lot of Tory voters who are church goers or at least used to be uh, until the church effectively packed up during the pandemic and stopped <coughs> bothering welcoming people inside and went so woke. i think i think there's a faith <laughs> thing there um, obviously, Catholics are staunchly, broadly speaking, staunchly against anything like this. And I think that, you know, most pol politicians do shy away from the most emotive subjects, like the mm. abortion subject. Politicians don't want to go there with that either. So I think it's a sort of political cowardice, actually. I do think it's coming. I think well, there's, there's a yeah. sort it of... It is coming. Look, the whole thing... Get on of, with it. ...of people having to go to Switzerland and only then if they can afford right. it. It's grotesque, well, isn't if you, it? If you, you know, can go to... Having to pack a one-way bag and take a plane. Well, the last I think that repatriating was... the body, that that's the massive awful. headache, no, the lot of it. I think it's really difficult to bring the body back. It's very difficult. No, exactly. It's extremely difficult. And the last time we uh, did this subject, Rebecca Wilcox came on and we just devoted the whole show to it. Yeah. And we had call after call, call after, after call. call. People that broke feel your, very, very... 
broke your heart, yeah. these four people, yeah. you know, it was really bad. Well, on that subject, this is, of course, our big questions day. We do want to talk to you. Uh, so if you've got something to say, get in touch. Your texts and tweets have been coming in. Uh, we asked, should Brits be allowed to make their own decisions about ending their own lives? Amy got in touch and thinks, yes, I have multiple health conditions and my last responsibility to others is to remove myself. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy says, in some cases, yes, but the law must be written very carefully with strict caveats. But forcing someone with a terminal illness to end their lives in physical agony because of someone else's sensibilities is the height of cruelty. Ben tells us only if they do it themselves, but definitely not if they ask someone else to help them. Strange. Susie has messaged, I answered yes, simply because no one else and no government should have that power over anyone. Agreed. Penny says, yes, my body, my choice. I don't want anyone religious telling me I can't because of their views or any MP who just decides they don't like the idea. Hear, hear. Well, yeah, keep your thoughts coming in on this topic. We'll